Hello everyone, my name is Terrence and welcome back to The Big Show. Today we will be continuing our story following the career of UFC lightweight prospect Desi the Merciless Martin. Last time we saw him form a bond with Coach Davis and tear through the amateur MMA scene, earning him a shot in the UFC. After a successful debut scoring a first round knockout against Yancey Medeiros, Desi was awarded a performance bonus and an incredible highlight for his ever-growing resume. In this episode, we'll see if the good times can keep rolling as Desi takes on yet another dangerous striker in Mark Jacasey. For this fight, we want to continue improving Desi's striking, cardio, and footwork. While extremely risky and far from technical, Desi's aggression has brought him tremendous success. The problem is that that style will be extremely difficult to maintain if fights get into deeper waters. In the Madero's fight, Desi's stand-up was on another level. Even with the substantial experience gap, Yancey never found an opportunity to impose his will or implement whatever game plan he brought to the table. That being said, if Madero's had been durable enough to make it out of that first round, the combination of UFC jitters and the overexpended cardio from Desi could have changed the course of the fight. Alright, so this time around, I listen to you guys' comments, I listen to Coach Davis, and I think the best strategy here for Desi is to circle away from Mark's power. He throws a lot of spinning attacks in the UFC. I'm assuming he's going to be throwing some of those same unorthodox, flashy uh, kicks and strikes in this fight. So as long as I'm circling away, uh, I should be able to see his spinning attacks coming. Beautiful head kick there. I know I throw a lot of those head kicks, but it's because I think it's one of Desi's probably most useful tools aside from his straights. Um, I've thrown so many of those straights, I'm not even sure what their level is anymore. Um, and for those of you curious, yes, my voice is almost gone. Um, I'm recovering from a cold. Don't worry about it. I'm surviving. It's not that one thing that'll get me demonetized on YouTube that I can't say out loud. Um, it's just a cold, and I'm fine. All right, back to the fight. Um, so the strategy, like I said, was circling away and doing my best. I, I'm a high-volume striker with Desi. Uh, right, high powerful punches, throwing a lot of kicks, high kicks, uh, low kicks to set up the high kicks. But I was told in the comments last time that I need to focus on my cardio. Don't get crazy and start throwing a whole lot of these power strikes just because you land a few of them, uh, because you will get punished for that everywhere else later in story mode as you begin to fight tougher people or career mode as you begin to fight tougher, more well rounded people. And just a spoiler, uh, Jim Miller's coming up in a few episodes, and uh, he's a complete mixed martial artist. The last thing you want to do is go in there and lose all your cardio throwing power strikes uh, rather than fighting intelligently. I think in this fight, I fought pretty intelligently with Desi by circling away from the power hand, staying out of range by improving my footwork. I was able to stay out of range of all of his spinning attacks. Um, he does land a few, but for the most part, I think I did a pretty good job of staying away from those strikes. Um, I think I still expended probably a little too much cardio, uh, but like right there, you see me throw the double high kicks. I probably could have thrown a low kick there and then set up the straights. It would have been a lot better. Uh, we're still working on improving Desi's takedown defense and his ground game in general. Um, we still need to throw some points at his submission game. We still need to throw some points at his grappling all the way around. Because right now, I've only updated, I think, I've only used a few evolution points on wrestling. So, got to keep working on that. There you see I was in perfect range with that head kick. Uh, he was just a little bit to the side. Um, and there I pop pop and I didn't dip out and so he catches me um, with that attack the high kick the knees to the body okay so one thing we learned in that first round was that we got to stick and move continuously stick and move keep circling uh, and we should be fine. He wasn't able to do much of anything effective. He did get the takedown, but we got right back up. So I'm not too worried about that. Cardio-wise, yes, I expended a little bit more than I should have, but in a three-round fight, I feel like this is okay. Still better than the first few fights uh, where we were just blowing through all of our cardio in one round, uh, or stamina in one round. This time, I think we're doing a much better job gauging that. Uh, we just got to keep our defenses up. There I tag him with a good straight as he was coming in. 
uh, basically he's playing the way I played earlier, really aggressive with the unorthodox strikes, throwing a lot of spinning attacks and kicks. Um, his cardio isn't getting expended as much, but like right there, you see he's just so much more uh, vulnerable to those attacks. Uh, my straights and everything are just that much more powerful when he's trying to hit me with a spinning attack. Uh, there's my jab right there, level, what was that, two or three? I didn't even see. Um, oof. Come on, circle back, circle back. There we go. Don't circle towards the power side. Keep that straight in his face. He's finding some success, but I still feel like I've I've got his. I feel like I've got his number. Come on, throw that straight. Should probably be working some leg kicks in here as well. Love the clinch game. Good body kick there. Oh, and a good knee. Good body shot. Right on time. I talk about working the body, and then I do work the body. Keep the straights in his face. When those straights are in his face, it's an absolute danger to throw any type of strike uh, that's like a spinning attack or anything. If I land while he's throwing one of those, even with the straight, he's going to get rocked. Keep circling through the high kick, but didn't set it up, so that was an easy block uh, for him. Keep that straight in his face. And you see I heard him there twice with the straights, with the jabs, just because he was trying to do those spinning attacks. Honestly, that's what's hurting him. If he just stayed in my face and kept the body shots going, um, or just relied on the takedown, honestly, he probably would have been fine here. He probably could have easily rocked me a couple times already in this fight. Rustling get-ups, got a little bit of an upgrade there as necessary. Ooh, good kick there. That heel kick, what was that, a hook kick? Keep the jab in his face, like I've said a hundred times already. And you'll see now, he's not the one pressuring, I'm the one pressuring now. Before, I was kind of circling out, letting him be aggressive. But now, I i mean, we've got his number. he He's done for at this point. Um, he's looking for anything he can find to bring him back into this fight. All right, round three, and I immediately start taunting. I promise you that was on accident. I was trying to figure out how to do the glove touch for whatever reason. It wasn't working for me this time. Ignore that. Ignore that. All right, so he immediately goes for another spinning attack. We see that coming. No worries there. He's trying to pressure again, and you'll see immediately I just go right back to circling, sticking that jab in his face, and, I mean, bam. He throws the spinning attack. I was in range, I probably could have been a step back on that. I mean, you can imagine when a lot of these attacks are coming, those are fairly predictable. Um, right there he hits the overhand on me. This is just me being too close looking for the finish. And it almost pays off there. Drop him nasty with the, the what was that, a left hook? So, not bad. The straights in this game, as long as you stay in their face, and puff them and then dip out I've noticed at least in career mode for me right now you stick them in the face move uh, you can mix it up to the body but you want to set up body strikes because body strikes leave you far more vulnerable in this game in my opinion than they did in UFC 3 and I get rocked there with a head kick just over expending on my my strikes overreaching it's the final round I'm like who cares about conserving stamina at this point just go all out um, I am still kind of fighting intelligently with that mindset and my favorite combination in the world, the straight to the high kick, does the trick. And that wraps it up and Desi takes another huge win. That should put him at 3-0 now in the UFC and he's moving up the ladder extremely fast. Next week we'll be facing off against James Vick, another talented kickboxer. Uh, James Vick does have a decent ground game. We'll see if he's able to put that to use height wise. Uh, <laughs> well, we're, we're kind of used to fighting tall people at this point, so it's not a problem until next week. I'll see you guys later. Peace.